Hey everybody, welcome back to episode number three of uh, The Joy of Japanese Business, uh, Japan Business Time with Rochelle Karp. And uh, today we have uh, another positive themed uh, episode talking yes. about the, well, the positive points of uh, Japanese work culture. Um, you have so many people ripping on it all the time. So we're going to talk a bit about that. And this is from uh, John Clemens, uh, Book of Host. Otherwise, so uh, hang around. It's going to be a good show. So, so the positive right. aspects. I mean, people talk about all the, the lack of productivity and the endless work hours right. and the, the drone salary. People, and it's easy to get sucked into talking about that stuff. Right, but, exactly. But we don't really talk very much about what other... You'd almost think there are no positive aspects of Japanese work culture. Oh, but there are very... There are, definitely. But there are. I mean, you know, and we... So... so if you were explaining to Westerners, what, what, what are the things that we should be learning from Japan? Right. What are the positive things that, right. that, that, we can, that are informative to us? Well, think? I would say the biggest thing for me would be predictability. Yes. And things work, things go smoothly because people plan and people are careful. My, my favorite thing about Japanese, and that I'm constantly trying to teach people who come to Japan, fruitlessly sometimes, um, but what, what, what underpins this predictability is this whole thing of nemoashi. Yeah. Um, it's the whole idea of just going around and consulting people, lead, making sure people are informed, their contributions are in, and they don't feel ambushed at right. all. They don't have a big surprise. Yeah, yeah, it just is putting oil in the machine of decision making. Right, right. And it's showing respect for other people. It is. Yes. But it also means that people can get ready for things that are going to happen. Yeah. And it makes things much more efficient. Right. That's right. And you don't have so-and-so who's misunderstood the point, who's you know making a, a freakishly, this is outrageous kind of... You do have, I think most people intuitively react to change like, oh no, well you can't do that because... And particularly in Japan, and this is why. And when you've got a consensus-based sort of decision-making culture, um, you nothing, nothing can function unless you actually take the time to lay groundwork and prepare. And it, it looks hugely inefficient, I know. But the thing is, is that when you have groundwork and buy-in done that well with with decision processes right. I, I, it's so much more effective and it's so much more harmonious and right, people right. sometimes even if it's the right call i know right. so many cases where i've seen western decision making where people just you know they still resent the way right, that it was exactly, done exactly and it, well, it all goes down to that if things are very carefully set up and planned yeah you can execute very quickly yeah and there was this great video that was going around of a japanese train station and it was changing from <laughs> above ground to below ground yeah. and they dismantled the whole thing and put it all together in 12 hours overnight yeah and yeah. when you know, in, in that's planning right yeah. yeah and i've heard lots of other stories like that from japanese companies where execution is just amazing yeah because everything has been set up and there's namawashi that goes into that right and people, yeah, and this is another thing, we won't go down this rabbit hole, but people who point out it's inefficient, uh, people are doing needless tasks, but, you know, these tasks actually can produce these kind of great outcomes, and it's the yeah. outcome that they're going for. They yes. want the outcome of this 12-hour change, even right. if it takes a week to prepare. Right. Well, they could, they could have done it in three days kind of sloppily, but no, and, 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 you know, construction, there's no better example than construction, the speed that these buildings go up. It's in amazing. these towns here you know they dig a hole they sit there looking at it for about a year and then all of a sudden there's like three floors going up every day um you know it's just incredible exactly what you're talking about when japanese organizations move they really move yeah even if it's in the wrong direction <laughs> but no they, they actually but the thing is they're so cautious and careful about this sort of right, stuff right. But well. then, yeah, and so it takes a long time to kind of get your bearings and get your course and once you have your course way it's straight ahead yeah 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 all right well so that's a good one. Um, definitely the predictability and planning. I, what else do you think? I would say you know, the fact that there's a lot of politeness yeah. and a lot of civility and not a lot of open hostility and confrontation and those kinds of things. Yeah, we did talk about passive aggression in the last season. Um, right, but this is the positive side of that. This is the positive side of that. <laughs> And this is a little bit, I experienced this in America when I was talking about people, when I was meeting people comparing Californian and New York culture, business culture. 
And it's a little bit of the same thing. Japanese will definitely try to keep up the appearance of uh, yeah, that's right. Well, people people are just people suck it up. People yeah. suck it up, and I I appreciate that. And I actually am more comfortable around people who are making sure making a conscious effort to at least hide frustration or lack of understanding, rather than I I I don't think I could work anymore any in a place with people just emoting all over the place, which uh, it well, gets tiring. It does. It does. <laughs> right. Well, it's yeah. To me, it's wasted energy, and I know some people look at that as a positive thing, and it just depends on the type of person that you are. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I appreciate people who ah, it's my old-fashioned English sense of stiff upper lip. I think that's right, right. a good, and that you definitely have that here. Right. Not always, right? And we could also just talk for hours about customer service and how oh, people yes. are treated when they are customers. Yes, lovely, right? Well, and the problem is, <laughs> see, now I'm ruined for. I can't. This is another reason I can't move because. It's not that I feel good customer service. It's just I leave Japan and I just feel terrible customer service oh, I know. Every, every time I go home. I just can't tolerate right. service anywhere else anymore. No, 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 exactly. I'm every spoiled. time I go home, it's just like, oh, no. Right. And you know what? It's behind that customer service. It's a lot of real hard work and preparation and inefficiency. Right. right. But it comes out as, as this wonderful thing. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And that's the, that's the magic of it. That's where you, you can't love the good about Japan and condemn that what you see is the bad when you um, they're, they're inextricably they're connected. linked you can't just get rid of that bad stuff and have everyone take it easy and expect to have all the good stuff right. um, and that's what I came here to learn that's what I came here for the business stuff for so I think we captured it very well I think so yes so uh, yes uh, more uh, of the uh, joy of Japanese business and more, more of these sort of subjects so hang around next week and uh, see you then okay bye bye